Uh, can I ask you, first of all, sorry, first of all, what you made of the Irish border part of Theresa May's speech? Well, look, I mean, we uh, we certainly welcome uh, uh, the fact that she was very definitive in terms of her continuing commitment to the Good Friday Agreement, which, of course, is the the foundation stone for for the peace process um, uh, in Northern Ireland. Um, <clears throat> we also welcome the fact that she uh, renewed her commitment to the to the agreement that was made politically before Christmas in the joint paper between the UK and the EU. Um, and uh, but beyond that, uh, she hasn't really gone into any more detail than we've already heard in terms of how she's going to solve the problem of maintaining a largely invisible border uh, on the island of Ireland. What she referred to essentially in, in terms of detail uh, was the basis of two papers that the British negotiating team well. published last summer, sure, but uh, which, which talked about a customs union partnership uh, and also talked about uh, streamlined uh, customs arrangements, those being the two options that she wants to well, explore further. Let me ask uh, you and of course, she didn't refer to the may. detail. Let me ask you about, a bit yeah. about, because she did give some detail. She said 80% of, of small businesses simply will be ignored completely. And the 20% of the really big companies with very, very high value goods crossing the border can be dealt with electronically. Doesn't that make some kind of sense? Well, you see, this is this is the mistake that I think is made in Britain all the time uh, when somebody definitively says that something will be the case from the British government. People assume that that is uh, the negotiated outcome. Of course, it's not. Um, and so um, I'm not sure that the European Union will be able to support a situation whereby 80 percent of companies that, ah, uh, that trade well, uh, north, south uh, and south, north will actually protect the integrity of the, the EU single market, which, of course, will be a big priority for the EU negotiating team. So I think that okay. uh, while, of course, we will explore and look at all of the proposed British solutions, they are essentially a starting point in negotiations as opposed to an end point. Uh, but look, I mean, so, our so, responsibility so in Ireland is sorry, to work I... with Britain. Now, Andrew, just give me a second, if, okay. if, if you might. Our responsibility in Ireland is, is to work positively with Britain to try to exp explore solutions. But if we can't agree on solutions, uh, well, then, of course, what we have is the backstop, uh, which is uh, a commitment by the um, British government to maintain full alignment with the rules of the customs union and single market. Well, you know that the back, that backstop is completely unacceptable to the British government because it looks like an attempt by the EU and by Dublin to effectively appropriate Northern Ireland as part of the EU system. Um, but you have just said something very interesting. You have suggested that um, if you don't get what you want, it could be the Irish side which puts up a hard border. The British government has been absolutely clear. Under no circumstances will they put up a hard border. Are there circumstances Andrew, in which Dublin would put up a hard border? Andrew, I haven't said that, so please don't put words well, in my mouth. Um, uh, the, British, um, uh, uh, the British government understand only too well, and Theresa May was very clear on this. Uh, they understand how a single market works. It was actually Britain, probably more than any other country, helped to design the single market in terms of how it functions today. So everybody understands that as part of this negotiation, that this isn't a question of either side wanting to put up borders. But if you have to protect a functioning single market, just the same way as Britain wants to protect its own single market, uh, well, then you have to understand that if, good moves, if goods move from one customs union to another, then there needs to be some checks unless there is some mechanism yeah. that's negotiated and put in place that prevents that. But and the British government, whether people want to accept it or not, uh, committed clearly in December to ensuring that if there wasn't a political agreement on an option A or an option B in terms of how to solve the Irish problems, well, then, of course, the default position, which was agreed to reassure everybody in Northern Ireland, uh, and people living on both sides of the border and the many SMEs and companies that trade uh, on an all island basis, uh, that actually um, maintaining full alignment with the rules of the customs union and single market would be the default position. Now, we don't want that. What right. we want is an option A that we can negotiate through the EU negotiating team with, uh, the, e uh, with the British negotiators to actually get a better solution that applies to all of the United Kingdom. Uh, so that Ireland's trade with Britain east-west and north-south can be maintained as it is today. That it's a 65 billion euro trade relationship. 